Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. Mrs. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey students, Mr. Bergman here. It is uh, another school year. I hope you are as excited as I am to be here. <laughs> Some of you are going like, school, oh my gosh, I hope that's not it. Hey, I want to introduce the class with a series of videos. So this is like that boring lecture at the beginning of the year about syllabus and stuff like that. But I want to do it a little differently with this video. So I want to talk, first of all, about what I believe about education. So what I believe about education is, number one, that all students can learn. Each one of you can learn. Now, I, I know you're in a hard class, and maybe you're a little fearful of this class, but I want you to know that I know that all students can learn. There was a, there was a educational theorist, researcher dude, and he said years ago that I believe that all students can learn anything, get enough time and support. And so my goal this year is to give you the time and the support so you can learn whatever it is that we're going to be learning. And I, I believe, honestly, uh, how people learn. I, when we talk about how people learn, honestly, I believe there are two key things. And this is actually based on research. I like to believe in research. Um, number one, I believe that if you're going to learn well, it should be active. And I'll show you some images of what that might look like. So active learning, not passive, right? Passive sitting and just get. Um, and the second thing I believe is it's also based on this word right here. I hope that you will hear from me, you will see from me that I care about you. You're a human. Uh, God has made you as an individual person with your own needs, your own wants, your own passions, your own whatever. And I hope over the course of this year um, that you're going to allow me in, as I'll allow you in to my life so we can get to know each other, uh, not in a weird sort of way, that did sound kind of weird, <laughs> but in a, in a way that I hope that we can... Uh, Conquer science together. Now, the teaching methodology that we're going to use as we go through this is a method that's called mastery learning. And so I want us to define mastery learning and walk through the definition. This is the official definition. Uh, mastery learning is an approach to classroom instruction that empowers every student. All right, hold on, pause. That empowers every student, that's you, at every level to progress with confidence. So you're going to move through content, hopefully, I mean, you will, with confidence. The teacher then uses flexible pacing, we'll talk about what that looks like in the class, to guide students through a cyclic process, it's a cycle of preparation, demonstration of knowledge, uh, and this is kind of important, so that there's mutual agreement between the teacher, that's me, and the in individual student, that's you, that students are ready for the next cycle to begin. Now, mastery learning, by the way, it's been around for a long time. It's been around for a long, long time, and um, here is the mastery learning cycle, okay? Let me talk you through this. We're gonna start with, you got, here's something you gotta know, clear objectives. Then there's this rubric, well, I'll show you what rubrics look like. Um, this part you can actually skip, I've already done this work, plan assessments. Then you're going to go through this process, you will take a test. All right, but here's the big idea of mastery learning, let me just say that. Well, maybe illustrate it with this image right here, right? If, you know, I'm kinda, the ghost behind there, hi, uh, is, uh, you, some of you are going to take a driving test this year. Some of you have already taken your driving test. Um, you had to pass it before you could drive, right? Well, guess what? That's the idea. In, in a mastery learning system, when you get to this stage, you take a test. And if you pass the test, you move on. If you don't pass, you don't. Big idea. But the deal is, is if you don't learn something, I want to make sure that you actually learn it, right? Hence, you'll get some help. That's the word remediation. And then you're going to take again. So you're, it's going to be like, you're going to be right here, and we're going to cycle you back. Right, um, I'm going to give you some help, and you're going to retake. Actually, so like the, the, the arrow should actually go more back to the assessment, right? So you're going to get some remediation. You will retake the test, boom, and uh, ultimately the goal for you is to get an 80% on a test. You get 80%, you can move on. If you don't, well, you're going to make sure that you learn what you're supposed to do. Now, this class is also related to flipped learning. Now, some of you know what flipped learning is, some of you don't. But flipped learning, it was kind of best summarized by this sort of big diagram right here. This was some guy named Bloom, uh, Benjamin Bloom. That's what it's called, Bloom's Taxonomy. And this is like different levels of thinking, remembering, understanding. So if you looked at the bottom right here, those are easy. And applying is harder, analyzing harder, is evaluating harder. And if you think of most classes, right, where you've got your loss, you're like, I don't know what the teacher's talking about. I do. You, 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 your teacher teaches new stuff right here in class, and then you go home and you have to do apply. You do the hard stuff at home, right? 
Well, the idea of flip learning, and, and you'll see how this word mastering is we're going to flip this upside down. We're going to do the remembering and understanding stuff through videos and readings, and then you're going to use class time for the hard stuff. Um, it's going to put more on you, I'm going to say that, but you're going to learn more, and you're going to get the help you need. Um, and honestly, as I've thought this through even more deeply, I think we're going to spend the bulk of our class time sort of in this sort of cognitive realm. We're going to use that system. <laughs> cognitive, is that what it is? Uh, in our brains. Uh, brain time is going to be in the middle, in, in sort of this section. It, but you still, I mean, I guess the pact we've got to have, guys, is you need to do this stuff on your own so that when you come to class, you can do the hard stuff. Because, you know, if you're doing a hard chemistry or hard physics problem and you're doing it at home, guess what? I'm not there. I can help you. I really, I know this stuff pretty well. Quite really well. Um, if you need help, I can't help you at home. However, I can help you in class. So that's an important piece. All right. So, um, yeah. Now, what does a flipped mastery classroom look like? Let's watch a quick video right now where you can watch what um, a previous class looked like. Let me go through what I'm going to say, just sort of like the 10 big uh, things you want to know about a, a flip mastery class or a mastery classroom. Number one, there's going to be no whole class instruction. So I'm not going to stand up and lecture. Actually, I'll say little because we're actually going to have a time where we're going to have kind of previews of the next day or of the pre-work. It's called the pre-work or the independent work that you'll do. First, that's number one. Number two, you're going to have a flexible pace. More on that later, but it's important. You, you can't just have your own pace when you're doing this. You have to actually move at a pace that I'll prescribe. Uh, next video, I'll tell about that. Um, lots of what we call differentiation, where I'm going to be able to tailor the learning for you. So if you're struggling with a particular thing and another student's struggling with another thing, we're going to get the help that you need. It's that support thing that I talked about earlier. All right. And number four, lots of interaction between you and me. Uh, I think that's important. Um, also, a lot of interaction with each other. I think what uh, students have said, actually you'll hear them um, in a subsequent video, they're going to say that they loved that they had a chance to interact with each other. Uh, since important. Lots of opportunities to do what's called formative assessments. I'm going to really, we're going to have a lot of time to talk, to talk about your learning. And during that time, I'm going to be assessing you, but like, don't think of like this big old grade, grade thing. I'll, I'll be grading you, but I'm going to be grading you in a way that's helping you make sure that you learn. And then on what we call the summative assessment, that's the big test, that's the major exams. Um, whether we call our major exams boss battles, uh, you'll be taking these on computers. We're going to talk about that later. It's important. Uh, and it turns out that when you take the test, as a note, when you take the test, every time you take the test, you get a different version. So the software that we use, um, Brightspace, is going to allow us to have thousands of versions of the test. So even if I had all 30 of you were in the same class taking the same test, it's all actually a different test. That's how it works. And one of the beauties of this is you're going to get immediate feedback. So when you take a test, you're not going to have to wait. I'm going to grade it in front of you. Here's me grading uh, in front of one of our students, um, her boss battle, and uh, seeing if she passed uh, right away, in class, right away. And again, back to what we talked about at the beginning, um, it, the key to this is, is I know you're not going to learn unless you know that I care about you. And I hope you hear, I, I, I'm in for you guys. So that is a brief synopsis of mastery learning. I hope that kind of gets your brain Going, we'll see you in class.